What's up, guys? I'm Limcube, and I'm a Breath of the Wild player. I played the game for around 5,000 hours at this point in speed runs, challenge runs, all sorts of gameplay elements. And today I'm going to be rating all bows in Breath of the Wild. So recently I've done a weapon tier list, which was actually really well received. Thank you for that. I got a lot of nice messages and also some feedback, which I'll try to um, think about when recording this video. First of all, though, in terms of the feedback, keep in mind, like any tier list, there's opinions, right? We all have opinions. We have different experience when we play the game. If you want to state your opinion that's different than mine, I actually appreciate that. But try to keep it respectful. Like, don't flame me just because I have a different opinion uh, than you. There might be in your mind an objectively correct opinion. But this is where I do want to say, obviously... My experience is heavily skewed towards speedrunning, right? I do like a lot of speedruns from my 5,000 hours. 4,000 of them are probably from speedrunning. And this is why my perspective is obviously a little bit skewed in that perspective. And this is also why, if you look at my tier list right now, I don't have an F tier. I don't even have a C tier. For me, the worst tier for bows is B. There's basically no bad bows, in my opinion. And this is because bows will always allow you to go into bullet time, which is one of the most broken mechanics in the game. Allows you to fast travel using wind bombs, allows you to do bullet time bounces. It allows you to hit enemies much easier, stunning them with headshots, freezing them, electrocuting them, using ancient arrows to delete them. Bows in this game, in my opinion, are broken. Yeah, there's another small mechanic where if you basically shoot enemies on a tower, those like guard enemies, they will actually receive a 10 times damage modifier in headshots, so you can like do so much damage to them if you headshot them. And all of that, in my opinion, makes it so that bows are all good, or solid at least. I, I have an S tier here for the best, an A tier for good bows, and B tier for solid bows. And let's just get into rating them. And this time we'll actually start with an S tier weapon. The Ancient Bow, in my opinion, is one of the best bows in the game. Not only because it has like, I think 50 range, which is actually more than pretty much every bow uh, in terms of like um, their base range, the Twilight Bow and the Bow of Light being an exception. Um, but it also has 120 durability. And I'm not gonna make this entire tier list again centered around that durability transfer glitch that I talked in my weapon video. If you don't know that yet, um, it's basically a glitch where you are allowed to take the durability from one weapon and transfer it to another one. So you could basically make a 120 durability Boko bow. I don't know why you would want to do that, but you could also make a 120 durability Savage Lionel bow. And uh, that's obviously super powerful, specifically because this is not locked behind Amiibo. You can craft this bow, which is a little bit expensive using a giant ancient core, but it's a great bow and useful for even more than just it being good. So this is what pushes it to the S tier for me. It probably won't be the best bow on this list, but it will be S tier. Now, the Boko Bow is one of those bows that's probably a little bit skewed on my list compared to other people's opinions. And it's going to be a good bow um, for me. Or at the top of B. Actually, I will put it at the top of B, otherwise I think it's too controversial. And this is because we use this bow a lot on sp in speedrunning. It's super easily obtainable. A lot of the uh, enemies in the Great Plateau and around the Great Plateau carry this bow. It has solid durability, like usually you don't even run out of durability with this bow because you mainly use it to get into bullet time in speedruns. But it being so obtainable makes it a lot better. I will actually obviously rate the um, the other Boko bows above it. They will not quite reach the good tier. Even though it's important to say that the spiked Boko bow and the dragon bone Boko bow, while they, their durability and their damage goes up, and they actually do work with the Bone Attack Up modifier, which is interesting. But they don't quite... I mean, they might reach high damage numbers if you use the Bone Attack Up buff and Attack buffs. But the setup is pretty intricate and they're not great. And this is also an important point where I want to talk about the difference between wooden and metal bows. Wooden bows have the advantage that um, they are safe from lightning strikes. They don't attract lightning, so you can use them in a thunderstorm. But that's a pretty rare scenario. And also, at one point in the game later, you don't really care. You e either have like the, the Thunder Helm, or you have so much health and Mifa's Grace that even if you do get hit by lightning, it's kind of whatever. However, wooden bows do burn down uh, when you are up in the volcano in Elden. So that's something that will always be annoying, right? If you lose your bow because you had it out too much in the fire, that sucks. And that's why I will actually usually raid metal bows over wooden bows. And speaking of metal bows, this metal bow here is super interesting. This is an S tier bow if you use glitches, and a B tier bow if you don't. 
And this is because if you don't use glitches and you play this game casually, you can have the bow of light for three minutes in one of the most underwhelming sections of the game being the Dark Beast Ganon boss fight. It's the end of the game, cool and all, and this bow is epic, right? It doesn't use your ammo, it has amazing range. But you don't even get to learn how good it is if you are not using it outside of the fight. And there's two ways to use it outside of the fight. I mean, technically three if you consider the Twilight Bow being kind of like the budget version. If you use Amiibo, but if you are able to clip out of the Dark Beast Ganon boss fight using shield clips or other clip methods, or if you know how to do memory storage, which is a glitch that's incredibly hard. Um, I, I needed like three days to do memory storage once. And what that is, is basically it allows you to start a new file with equipment from a previous file, including the Bow of Light. So if you do this right, and I made a YouTube video about this, we'll probably link it in the description if you're interested. You can have a new gameplay file with the Bow of Light. The Bow of Light is a 100 damage, infinite ammo, inf almost infinite range bow that works with attack up. So if you headshot an enemy with the Bow of Light, they take 300 damage with the attack up. That's incredible. Um, that's incredible. But specifically keeping in mind how fast it shoots and it not using uh, ammo. If you have that at the beginning of the game, everything becomes a joke. And it would be an S tier bow, but because the glitch is so hard and because it's a glitch and it's not really in the game like that, I will rate it in the middle. But it's a super interesting bow um, that is super cool to have outside of the boss fight, but really hard to do. I had people in my chat say they've been working on this for weeks and I haven't gotten it once and I know why. It's so stupidly hard. The duplex bow is actually an interesting one. And another one where maybe my opinion as a speedrunner will change its rating. So usually a double shot bow is nice if you just care about damage because you shoot two arrows, right? The base damage is kind of low though. It burns down because it's made out of wood. But very specifically, it's useful for the Var Naboris section in speedruns. So if you remember when you attack the Vine Beast Var Naboris, the, the camel, it has like these protection... I don't know, griefs, like basically it, you have to shoot its feet, right? And those feet take two shots, two bomb arrows to be shot. With the duplex bow, it's only one shot because you shoot two bomb arrows at once. And more than that, you can use the duplex bow inside the Divine Beast to cheese some puzzles using electric arrows. I would recommend actually checking out an all dungeon speedrun to get an idea of that. It's super impressive and super useful. And because it has good range too, I will end up putting this bone to the A tier for its unique uses. It will probably be at the bottom of the A tier, but yeah, keeping that in mind. Now, this will be a controversial one, and the Falcon Bow for me is going to be at the bottom of S tier. Now, people will probably be like, why? Because I'm probably going to rate... Let's, let, let's actually rate a different bow uh, into the A tier. I'm actually, for example, going to rank the, uh, the Mighty Lionel Bow into the A tier. And people will be like, wait, what? The the Mighty Lionel Bow is metal, it doesn't burn down, it has more, much, much, much more damage. But the thing is, if you actually use the Falcon... Actually, maybe this is not controversial, because I think if you've used a Falcon Bow before, you know why it's so amazing. It has 40 range, which feels incredible. It has amazing fire rate. Have you ever seen a quick shot uh, Falcon Bow? It feels so good to use. Uh, when it has attack up, it feels great. Um... It's one of those things that, again, my opinion might be skewed, but I feel like if you play the game a lot and you could pick between the Mighty Lionel Bow and the Falcon Bow, you would always pick the Falcon Bow. Most people in my chat who are players that play Breath of the Wild a ton would agree with me here. Um, that doesn't mean you have to, but for me, the Falcon Bow is an S-tier bow, one of the best bows in the game. I would always call it that, so that's why it's in the S-tier. The Forest Dweller Bow, I would actually put into the A-tier and probably just below even though it's pretty, just below the uh, Savage Lionel Bow. Sorry, the Mighty Lionel Bow. Sometimes I confuse those. Because it just has a little bit less damage. It's not super powerful, but triple shot bows, ju it just being a triple shot bow and being able to be a five shot bow makes it super powerful. Um, so not only for DPS or damage. Um, that being said, it also is nice for arrow duplication. That's going to be a glitch I'm going to be mentioning there. If you have a five-shot bow, um, when you shoot arrows at a specific cooking pot, for example, at Kara Kara Bazaar, you shoot one arrow and then you get to pick up five, basically being able to yeah, duplicate your arrows to like a big amount. 
I've been doing that a lot in my Breath of the Wild 999 of each item challenge, which I'm currently still running on my Twitch channel. Quick ad, I guess. First of all, thank you for um, making me reach 60,000 subscribers. I really appreciate it. That's a nice step. And um, if this video, if you're watching this video when it goes live, I will probably be live right now on twitch.tv slash limcube attempting an interesting shield surf challenge. If you want to, the link will be in the description. Check it out. Um, but yeah, the first Weller bow is a solid bow. Um, and because it can be a five shot bow and it's already a triple shot bow, it will hit that A tier, in my opinion. Now, I think it makes sense to rank the Frenic bow and the Golden bow together. And this is, again, probably a little bit of bias. They will be probably at, like, the top of B tier to me. With the Golden Bow being basically better than the Frenic Bow in, any, in every way. More damage, more durability, and it being a Metal Bow. Which, again, I said it before. I, I rate Metal Bows in general higher than Wooden Bows. Um, I really don't like the Zoom Bows in this game. They throw me off a little bit when I use them. I don't like the game, like, zooming in like that. With the one exception of farming dragon parts. Obviously you need dragon parts in this game if you want to upgrade the champion's tunic or if you want to um, beat those shrines, right, where you need a dragon scale, even though you can technically get those from Hyrule Castle as well. Um, but a lot of people just farm dragon parts and this is something that maybe not everybody knows, but if you use a dragon part in a, um, a dish, right, if you cook a dish, for example, a speed up dish, the speed up dish gets a duration boost to 30 minutes. So using dragon parts, you can make like 30 minute speed up dishes or 30 minute attack up dishes. I think this is relatively common knowledge at this point, but uh, farming dragons can be something that you want to do in your playthrough. And those bows specifically stick out um, to me, being easily obtainable and allowing you to um, yeah, farm those parts. The Great Eagle Bow, in my opinion, is, and I'm going to say it, the best bow in the game. I will explain this more further because people will be like, wait, isn't the Savage the same thing, right? Isn't the Savage Lionel bow five-shot version much better? And it is in certain scenarios, but the whole package is what makes the Great Eagle bow amazing. So first of all, this is actually another thing that I didn't mention with the other, uh, 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 sorry, triple-shot bows earlier or multi-shot bows. Multi-shot bows is what even allow you to do durability transfer, and item duplication using menu overloading by placing a lot of, uh, sorry, like multi-shot bows with shock arrows on the ground. You can overload your menu and basically duplicate weapons. Um, just having the Great Eagle Bow and a bunch of multi-shot bows allows you to get a full inventory of Great Eagle Bows and then basically self-sustain forever. You can always make new Great Eagle Bows. That's something that we do actually in the 100% speedrun. And something I do in my 999 item challenge. Now, um, again, the Savage Lionel Bow is better in some situations. I will talk about this. But the whole package from the Great Eagle Bow. Durability. Um, sorry. Um, item duplication. You can duplicate it. Like, it self-sustains itself. It, it's a little bit hard to explain. But if you have a lot of Great Eagle Bows, you can always make more Great Eagle Bows using the Great Eagle Bows. Um, they have insane fire rate. They have good damage. Good damage. Less than the mighty... Uh, sorry, Savage Lionel Bow. But still good damage. They have a good fire rate. You shoot those arrows fast. Again, the range. Even if you don't use glitches, you can repair this bow all the time. Like it, it does cost you a diamond and like some wood and I think like one of those uh, swallow bows. We talk about those later. I don't know if they're, if, if they're called swallow or swallow. I, uh, you know, I'm German. Don't point it out. We know this at this point. Um, so I, sometimes my pronunciation will be off, but you get it. I think the Great Eagle Bow, because it has the whole package, is the best bow in the game. The Savage Lionel Bow will be up there, and I will explain where it's better. But that's my um, that's my point for now. Okay. Knight's Bow. The Knight's Bow will be somewhere in the in the good tier. Probably a little bit below the Duplex Bow. It's just kind of whatever, right? Maybe let's rate the whole let's rate that whole package other than the Royal Guards Bow. Um, and I'm, I think I'm going to rate it basically like this, right? Um, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's actually... I think that is too high. Um, I think they have to be in the B tier, right? With the Royal Bow barely hitting the A tier. And I guess this one should be over the Duplex Bow, just because its damage is better. And the Duplex Bow's little, like, quirks just make it slightly... Um, 
hit the A tier for me, right? The ones I talked about, the puzzle solving capabilities in Naboris. But and actually, I forgot the soldier set even existed. In the previous video, I only thought about the knights and the traveler set. But I think that's like a fair rating. <laughs> if we want to really rank the tiers, I think it would have to be something like this. It would probably have to be something like this, right? Um, but then those two would probably be... Those two would probably be... Hmm... Okay, let me let me explain the rating of this tier, okay? So the Knight's Bow is actually solid. It has great durability, it's a metal bow, it's super easily obtainable in lots of chests and everything. It can hit the high damage numbers. It's a pretty useful bow. Those two are useful for dragon farming and good durability. Those bone weapons, they do burn down. They're quite um, easy to ba basically lose on the volcano. They can hit higher damage than the Knight's Bow, but it requires more setup using, you know, the bone attack up buff, which is hard to get, requires a lot of... Um, initial investment and then those bows are all good right um the, the boko bow will not be the lowest bow on the tier list i can already uh, say that and um yeah they're just they're just solid bows in my opinion i think this is what i'm confident with for now um and actually while we are at it maybe let's rank the lazal bows somewhere in between and i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to rate the straight like the strongest i think the strengthened lazal bow I, I the names are hard sometimes um there's like the Zalbo, the Lizalbo, strengthened Lizalbo, and and oh man, you will know, you will know in the comments. I don't know, it's, they're strengthened Lizalbo, Lizalbo, and something else. I think this might be a different one. This might be the strengthened one. I'm not sure, but basically this is the strong version, 36 base power, just like the Royal Bow, but um, a little bit less durability, which is why it's just below the Royal Bow, and then. The strengthened version, where would I place those? Um, probably just probably just above. And I'm pretty sure this one is a full metal bow as well, which allows you to keep it in um, hot areas, which pushes this up a little bit. This is super close here. Those are like solid bows. You won't really make a big difference between them, right? But this is where it's going to get interesting. Um, the mighty Lionel bow... Uh, sorry, the... <laughs> See, this is what I mean. It's hard, man. Um, the normal Lionel Bow, sorry. Um, I think I will actually rate barely in the A tier and just below the Duplex Bow. One thing about the Lionel Bows is actually they have like a very small range and they shoot very slowly. But this is a weapon that you're very happy about when you pick it up first. This is probably when you kill your first Lionel, you get this bow. You're like, wow, this is, shoots like three arrows. This is so strong. It's metal, it has okay durability, and it's a nice pickup in the early game, and it will probably be better than each of these. Rating it under the duplex bow is probably something that will you will critique, but again, for me, the duplex bow is just a little better. It's something that stands out and something that I use more, and I explained why. Now, this might be another controversial one. The Royal Guard's bow um, is actually gonna be in the S tier for me, and it's gonna be above the Falcon bow, and it is going to be above the Ancient Bow. And this is, again, something that is probably going to be controversial. Um, on default, this bow is powerful. It is actually the quickest shooting bow in the game, uh, which is something that not everybody knows, right? But it has trash durability. I think its durability is like 18 uh, or something. Like, don't quote me on it. It could be 16, it could be 20. It actually might be 20. Um, so it breaks super quick, but it has high base power of 50. And it shoots super quick. It has great range. Um, again, the one reason this is this high to me is because of a setup that I would urge you guys to try out if you are interested in messing around with glitches. If you ever find a quick shot version of the Royal Guard's bow, keep it and try out the durability transfer glitch. Give it 120 durability with the Ancient Bow and you literally wield a machine gun. Like, it's actually so fun to use. A quick shot Royal Guards bow with high durability, you will shoot like three arrows in a second. I've had this happen once in a speedrun where I picked up this bow with a quick shot modifier before fighting Calamity Ganon. And it was like a different game. I was literally just gunning Calamity Ganon down. It's so fun. Um, if you ever find one, try that out and you might agree with me. And if you're not, that's fine. But I explained my reasoning. It's 
it requires more setup, which is why it's not the best one, but it's so fun to use. And obviously it loses a lot of damage. Now, the one bow that I will rank higher and at the second place is going to, is going to be the uh, Savage Lionel bow. I said it right this time. The five shot version of this bow is incredible. It's such high damage for one single shot. The highest damage for one single shot. Actually, yeah, no, it has to be higher than the Bow of Lights. But again, I explained my reasoning for the Bow of Lights. I guess this will end up on the top of A tier because it's so, yeah, um, it's hard to decide where to put it because the glitch is so hard and without glitches, it's so bad. But um, yeah, the, the Savage Lionel Bow is super, super strong. And I actually use this a lot less than the Great Eagle Bow. I already said, in my opinion, the Great Eagle Bow is the best bow in the game. Um, but I use it in specific scenarios, and the scenarios are when I need a lot of damage in one shot. So I've done a speedrun before called All Lynels. You literally just kill all Lynels, and that's where this bow really shines. Because the best way to kill Lynels without too much setup is to headshot them, so they basically fall to the ground, then spin attack them until they get back up from being like stunned or dizzy, and then you headshot them again. So they will basically go back down. They will never be able to fight back. And in those scenarios, that five shot Lionel bow is super powerful. It does so much damage in that one shot that you kill Lionels a lot faster. And another scenario where this bow is good is in master mode speedruns. If you've ever seen a master mode speedrun, um, and by the way, this is just niche uses. Obviously it's incredible in general, right? Like everybody knows this bow to be powerful and super high damage. Some people will probably think this is the best bow in the game and I can see why. But um, in master mode speedruns, you actually basically beat the game with just this bow. Like, I'm not even kidding. You, you, you go to the Great Plateau Lionel and use a rock to beat down the Lionel. I really urge you to check out the master mode speedrun. I have videos about it on my channel as well. You go to the Great Plateau Lionel, you beat the Great Plateau Lionel down with a rock, and it drops um, one of those bows and a crusher. And it actually has a guaranteed modifier on this bow, so you can get a five-shot bow, like... 10 minutes into the game and then you just take that bow go to Ganon and beat up like all of the blights and calamity with just this bow and that crusher but mainly the bow it's so strong and it has solid, solid durability too it's a metal bow it's one of the best bows in the game and it will just be number two spot now speaking of which um the worst bow in the game to me is the silver bow <laughs> I know people love these weapons specifically aesthetically, but this is another one of those cases where you look at it and uh, like you look at it on paper and you're like, damn, wait, okay, like 40 durability, it's like solid and like decent damage should be better than the Boko bow, right? But if you use this bow, it's literally the biggest pain ever. This bow, I don't know the exact stats, there's actually stats on this, but it definitely feels like it has the slowest fire rate in the game. It takes for some reason so long to pull that bow back, to then get this absolutely pitiful range on the shot. Like, just use it, okay? Don't just look at the stats and say, oh, you're obviously wrong, Limcube, the Boko bow is better. Use this bow and decide again. If you just want to grab a couple quick Boko bows and just use them for bullet time, or if you want this absolutely pitiful bow. It's just, it's just not worth for how rare it is, and I wish it was better, but yeah, use it. You have to use this in the DLC refight of Water Blight, and man, it's a pain. Um, definitely, for me, the worst bow in the game. And uh, speaking of which, I will actually put the wooden bow just above it. And this will be like, wait, this will be another controversial one. The wooden bow actually has, I think, one more damage and a little bit more durability than the Boko bow. But just because it's more rare and the improvement is basically unnoticeable, I will put it below the Boko bow. Um, that is my decision making here. The Boko bow is more common, the wooden bow is more rare, and it's a tiny bit better, but it's not good enough to justify it being that much more rare. Um, it will actually be very low on the list as well. Now, these two bows being left, um, I actually have a tough decision to make. So, the Twilight bow will be right here. Um, I think it will sit at the top of A tier for specific reasons. It's basically, obviously, a worse uh, version of the Bow of Light, and the Bow of Light is much better, I explain my reasoning for the Bow of Light, if you are able to obtain it, but it's obviously easier to obtain, right? You can get the Twilight Bow with just Amiibo, which, yeah, I guess that's kind of paywalled, right? But if you get the Twilight Bow, you have a super high uh, range bow, which is, again, useful for specifically, in my opinion, dragon farming, and the biggest reason this bow is good is because it doesn't use your ammo. 
If you're not super confident in those glitches where you can duplicate arrows, or if you don't even want to use them because you don't like using glitches, I get it, right? Then this bow is um, amazing because you don't lose any arrows. You can just farm things with it. You can kill things with it. You have great range. You can do cool trick shots. I think it's, it's also, okay, let's look at it as well, right? It's super pretty. Um, not that it matters a lot, but how cool does it look? Um, again, it doesn't really matter, but you use light arrows with this instead. So you don't uh, lose your ammunition. And um, it has solid power. I think it has 50 base power. Um, it's a great bow. I, I would almost put it into the S tier, but it being an amiibo bow. Um, and yeah, that basically makes it so that it's like paywall, right? It, you could say it's better than the Falcon bow because it has more range, more damage. But the Falcon bow... Um, I think the Falcon bow shoots faster, first of all. But second of all, it's also so easy to grab compared to this one. Again, if you have Amiibo, I guess not, but it's literally paid. So I would put it in the A tier. That's my reasoning. Obviously, again, keep in mind, opinions are opinions. This is my my placement for it. And another maybe controversial one is going to be this one. The Swallow Swallow Bow. Correct me. Um, in my opinion, will be very high. And I will explain why. I think I will put it right here. And this will be probably one of the most controversial ones, um, actually. But the reason I put it here is, first of all, casually, it allows you to make new Great Eagle Bows. That's great. In my opinion, the best bow in the game. And the niche use that makes it so good... Okay, so, wait, it's also, it has great range. Let's keep that in mind, too, right? Great range is very useful in this game. Uh, sometimes you want to shoot things from afar. It shoots quick. Actually, as a quick, um, you know, quick... Uh, Quick shot. It, it, I mean, it doesn't have quick shot, but it shoots quite quick. You pull bow the back, uh, the bow back quite fast. My God, it's getting late apparently. Um, and that can be useful. And the niche use, what pushes it so high for me, is that it has all of these things while still being low damage. And that may sound a little confusing, but this bow will always have a good spot in my heart or whatever. Because in speedruns, and we don't even use bullet time bounce that much anymore, it's an amazing uh, amazing bow for BTBs. Because usually, when you want to freeze an enemy, it does quite a bit of damage, right? Again, if you don't know what BTBs are, you freeze enemies, link shield jumps onto them to then get insane speeds. You've probably seen them before. And this bow is great for the setup for those BTBs. Because you can free you can first of all shoot very specific visual cues with its great range to set up the enemy in a way you want it to, and then freeze the enemy as well without killing it. Like, if you use a Royal Guards bow for that, sometimes you will just kill the enemy with the, uh, the ice arrow, and then you can't do that BTB. And it just has so much going on for it, even though it has low base power, um, that it's just a good bow, in my opinion. And I would actually consider it above these, the Royal bow having, like, bad uh, range, good durability, um, good damage. Um, this one being basically just a worse version of that. This one having puzzle capabilities. This one being able to five-shot bow. I think I explained all of these bows pretty well, and this might be a controversial rating, but that's my decision. I'm gonna put the Swallow bow here. Thank you guys for watching. That was my bow tier list. Um, be kind. Don't flame me too much in the comments. You can explain your opinions, obviously, and let me know what tier list you want me to do next. We can do shields, we can do enemies. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. And yeah, I think I see you guys in the next video. Check out my Twitch stream and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it and uh, see you guys soon.